Tom Leach, uh, I want to, he's been a long time fan and I don't want to wax poetic. All, all I want to say is that the most amazing thing happened this summer is Tom and I have a baby. This is our 10th anniversary of going on a baseball trip. And our goal is to see every stadium in the country. And we've been doing this for 10 years. Well, this year, we went to Yankee Stadium. And just on a whim, Tom sends Brian Cashman, the general manager of the Yankees, an email. <laughs> the ghost of Brian is here tonight. Uh, and tells him we're coming. Well, and gives uh, him the, the telephone number. Well, on the way to the airport, Brian Cashman calls. Baseball. We're going to talk baseball with Brian Cashman. I mean, he's the general manager of the Yankees. And so we get to New York. We go down to Yankee Stadium. We go in and uh, uh, we're here to see Mr. Cashman. Oh, man, you have to come this way. So we get up there and we sit down. And here we are face to face, Tom Leach, myself, Brian Cashman. All Brian Cashman wants to talk about is UK. UK football. UK basketball. And here we are sitting here in front of the most important sports mogul in the world, running the number one sports franchise on the planet. And he's sitting there, oh, Tom, what do you think is going to happen this fall? When so we ended up spending an afternoon talking UK, and that goes to show you how deep the pinnacles of UK sports uh, really go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the voice of the UK Wildcats football, basketball, Tom Leach. Thank you, thank you. How many of you guys have uh, been down Lexington for a game? Okay, pretty good. Have you seen the castle between Lexington and Versailles? Not the jewelry store, but the castle, the real castle. That's the other thing Brian Cashman asked us about. <laughs> was what they were doing in the castle. They were building a little bit of uh, something inside and uh, adding to it. A uh, couple of pieces of news, breaking news, we'll tell you. Uh, the first one deals with Wildcats and uh, the Alex Legion era, short though it was has apparently come to an end. There's a story on the Lexington Herald Leader's website this afternoon quoting Alex as AAU coach and godfather as saying that it's uh, Alex has decided that he is going to be a little kind of dance back and forth last week. Was he really going to go? Was he maybe going to come back? And that continued to, to this week until there was a, a final resolution. So it looks like that's happening. Final show this week in UK. And we'll finish up his coursework uh, this week. may already be done for that matter. And then he'll somewhere. Uh, I think it was almost clear to say there were six or eight different schools that had uh, extended offers to him already. And I thought maybe he might end up back in Michigan where he originally committed. The other interesting piece of news, and this actually broke uh, while we were in the reception an hour or so ago, former Louisville coach Bobby Petrino is leading Atlanta Falcons. And he's going to be, once again, coaching against Kentucky next season at Arkansas. How about that? Um, so that just happened uh, within the last couple hours. So he'll be going to, uh, to Arkansas. And so he obviously show up Kentucky schedule on a regular basis because of the rotation. So uh, I remember thinking, you know, boy, Coach Brooks just got the team to where he wanted it to be after Coach Petrino left. So he'll he'll always have that on his, uh, his resume to be known for against Bobby Petrino. Well, he may get it. One more shot by the time uh, the Ridgeback show back up on the schedule. Coach Brooks said that he wanted to be the longest tenured coach in Kentucky, which would be 10 years. And he's halfway there. And it's there's a good chance that he'll uh, hit that goal. And uh, at that point, that, that might be uh, it. He might uh, go back to Oregon and retire. But I don't think that's going to happen. They have to battle the LU fans. If you're uh, in Louisville, you're battling the U of L fans. Here, you're a Kentucky fan. You're, uh, you're battling the Buckeye fans. The Ohio State Buckeye fans. Uh, Kentucky has a, a lot of rivalries, whether it's uh, Louisville, Tennessee, Florida. Brings uh, my story in the Tennessee game, so it's funny. And if you hear Rocky Top as much as we have had to some years, but uh, still just a little bit too much. It's all written by Kentuckians, actually, but it's come to uh, bring bad memories for Kentucky football fans in particular. Jim Post, a uh, good friend of mine, business partner, guy who hired me to, uh, to do this job, is from not too far from here, the Ashland area. Uh, there's a story that I've heard him tell many times about a pilot flying back in across the state of Kentucky in the wee hours of the morning. And this was pre-K where every every Kentucky basketball game, so lights are on everywhere, every house, pilot radios into the tower. What's what's going on? What's, what's happening? Fire all these lights on at 2 o'clock in the morning. Everybody's listening to the game. The lights on all over the place. So it's happy for the tower, uh, whether it was out of Lexington, Huntington, wherever they knew what, the, what it was about. I was one of those kids that uh, played, the basketball team played in the Maui tournament the next week. And then there was the football game at Tennessee. So I did a game at Commonwealth Stadium. Drove to Cincinnati, stayed in a hotel, got up, flew out early the next morning to Maui. Got in there on the Sunday afternoon time change. Did games on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Ate Thanksgiving lunch in Maui. Flew out late that afternoon from Maui back to Cincinnati. The time change got in at like 2 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Drove home, went to bed, got up, rode to Knoxville, did the Tennessee football game. So it's quite a schedule to, to do all that in the span of eight days. And I was telling uh, a listener who was in to participate on one of our college shows at the radio station where I work about that schedule that was coming up. And his first response was, boy, you have a great job. <laughs> that was the key that's because he's right. It's, it's, yeah, it can, yeah, sure, it's, it's tiring, a tiring schedule. 
but uh, that's what I, I always want to be doing, so you have to always remember that. As a broadcaster, you dream of, of memorable moments, great finishes, so this football season was a great deal of fun with games like the Louisville game, which Kentucky won in the final couple of minutes, or the LSU game, Kentucky won at the third overtime with the stop. And when you're calling those kinds of games, you know, if you come up with that Al Michaels line of do you believe in miracles with 1980 uh, America Russia hockey game, that's wonderful. It's just you know priceless to come up with that, that moment that just captures the, the scene and the mood perfectly and uh, lives on throughout time. But as a broadcaster, the first goal is just don't screw it up. Don't call the wrong player, don't call the wrong score. The, the wrong name uh, that, that play in LSU game several years ago when the ball was tipped and caught him and went in. Uh, the LSU broadcaster, and it's going to happen to him. He picked up, he picked up the wrong number, picked up as, a, as an 8 instead of a 9, called the wrong guy, catch a pass, quickly correct it. And you, you're just going <laughs> just gonna to make those mistakes. It's a happen. Uh, somebody told me about one uh, a couple days ago, the uh, player I remember several years ago in the playoffs where the Titans threw the Virginia kickoff and threw it over to Frank Wycheck. He took off the sideline and scored the, or Wycheck threw the pass over to. Uh, Music to Miracle Lake Hall, through the backwards, and catspaws.com, those kinds of things. Well, the Florida version of catspaws.com had 800 folks logged on to wait for the live, to see the live news conference from Jay Liskow Houston, who was going to announce. And the same moment those 800 fans were logged on in Florida, there were 11,000 logged on to the catspaws. So you can up an idea of the difference of uh, patching the fan bases. It's been a tough start to uh, the Billy Gillespie era for the Wildcats, especially in the last two games, getting pretty sounded by uh, North Carolina and by Indiana most recently. Um, the good news of late, you probably saw this from last night's coaching show, is that Coach Gillespie says that Derek Jasper is starting to practice and looking good, and they seem to have, uh, Coach Gillespie seem to have a very optimistic tone about Jasper. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if he does uh, suit up on Saturday. Uh, you know, from a conditioning standpoint, he's, he's going to take him a while to get back into the game shape to play at a lot of it. whenever he does get back on the court if it's Saturday or it's next week, whatever. But uh, he can make a, make a big difference in a formal contract, and do, do I think he'll be here beyond this year. I, I do. I uh, saw a story today where Coach Smith, Minnesota, just uh, the last couple of days signed his contract. So he's been working with that. I mean, it had an agreement, a shell of a contract, if you will, but the, uh, the full document just got signed for him up there. So it's, I guess, not it's, it's not as, as rare, I guess, maybe as we might think. Uh, at the moment, they have uh, kind of a, that shell of a contract that, that was agreed to at the outset, and the university's position is that if they can't get together, all, get the lawyers together, all the details, they're just going to stick with that. So it's probably not the best situation, uh, but, you know, it, Success fixes about everything, so if they uh, you know, keep having success on the recruiting trail and that translates into wins, uh, everything else is taken care of. But I think it'll be good next year. Back to that. When the spring next year, what will be question is, is uh, Chris Blair, Michael Hartline, quarterback, went into spring next year, and uh, a qualified, strong endorsement for Curtis Fuller's qualification is obviously it's the, the academic issue that got him be better. I think I would take Florida 06 